Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. So before we begin this video, I just want to note some things up top. I initially only plan on ever doing one video on COVID-19 as a whole, which I did at the start of this year. So go watch that one if you haven't already. However, as 2021 has rolled on, this later name related news for COVID-19 has seriously piqued my interest. So I thought I'd do another video on this matter alone. And also not only is this a topical video, something I only do rarely, but this news story is so fresh that seems somewhat ongoing. This means some of the information I mentioned in this video may very well be out of date or inaccurate in the near future. If there are any major changes by the time you're watching this video in the future then please do let us know down in the comments. Anyway, if you choose not to watch my first COVID video, then let's have a quick recap of events, shall we? In case you are somehow not aware, in late 2019 slash early 2020, the world was plunged into a pandemic as a new virus emerged on the global stage. Since it has made itself apparent, it has sunk its teeth into pretty much every part of our planet and disrupted normal life for the vast majority of the human population. Like I said, it would be pretty surprising if you are not aware of this issue. When this virus first emerged, it went by a multitude of names. The title first being used was coronavirus. This is actually a catch-all term for viruses like this one, coming from the word corona which means things like crown slash the ring of light around the planet slash the sun. They are named this because of the shape these viruses are under a microscope. However, eventually a proper name was created by the World Health Organization for this virus in particular, COVID-19. This is a simple blending of corona, virus, disease and 19 to establish the year in which it was first recorded. COVID-19 is a word that has entered our collective lexicon with very little argument. However, as the pandemic has carried on, COVID-19 has begun to change. Like many other viruses, COVID-19 has the ability to mutate itself and change how it infects and affects people who carry it. While many of these mutations are pretty minimal, sometimes these mutations are different enough that they can impact our world and lives much like the original COVID-19 did when it first broke out. The collective name we seem to have decided upon for these very mutations is variants. Luckily this is a word few people seem to be debating, though there are some other suggested words such as strain and lineage instead of variant. What has become more debated however is what names we should be using for these specific variants. A variety of titles have been applied to these variants, which has created quite a bit of nomenclature confusion and anger. It seems that the main source of confusion is coming from the fact that different groups of people are using different names for these different variants. In example, one variant first recorded in the United Kingdom is being called B.1.1.7 by the scientific community. However, when first noted by the UK, Public Health England dubbed it VOC 2020-12-01, with VOC meaning variant of concern. Many parts of the mass media, however, have decided to forego these jumbles of letters and numbers, and instead just branded it the UK variant. Names like the UK variant are a big source of anger, but we'll cover that in more detail in a bit. Though I'm sure you can understand just why things are getting so confusing. This confusion is pretty bad for a variety of reasons, primarily because in times of great stress and fear, like the one we are currently going through right now, we kind of need clear, concise, easy to understand communication. And names are a key part of how we communicate, so having different names with these different variants does not make communicating with one another all too easy. It also has a scientific impact too, as a lack of agreed upon names with these variants can become something of a burden for those researching these variants and studying their transmission. It seems however that the world is starting to wake up to this fact that these variants need clear, concise names. On the 12th of January 2021, the World Health Organization held a meeting concerning the coronavirus variants. One part of this meeting centered around a name for them. Maria van Kerkhove, an infectious disease epidemiologist and COVID-19 technical lead, said at this meeting that, I think all of us are becoming very confused by the different variant names. Tulio de Oliveira, a South African bioinformatician studying one of these variants, was a tad more to the point, as he referred to the nomenclature of COVID-19 variants as a bloody mess. Despite all this confusion, however, it seems that by and large, two primary different naming conventions have come about in regards to how these variants should be named. And these two naming conventions are the ones that are being used the most. For this video, we're going to be focusing on four main variants of COVID-19 from across the globe that have affected parts of our planet significantly and understand what names are being applied to them. 
the primary naming system we seem to have for them are their fancy scientific names. I mentioned this already in the example from the United Kingdom, which has been labelled B.1.1.7. The three other variants I want to highlight today have similar names to this one, being called B.1.351, B.1.617 and P1. This naming system was co-developed by Oliver Pybus, an evolutionary biologist at the University of Oxford. You may be wondering what has evolution got to do with the names of variants of a virus? However, the two are actually rather linked, as these variants could be seen as the evolutions of the initial COVID-19 virus. With this in mind, Pybus got to work on naming the variant lineage of COVID-19 in the same way that biological lineage of life is named. These names might seem like a random bunch of numbers and letters at first, but there is a method to them. It seems that the B.1 at the start of three of these names relates to the outbreak of COVID-19 that happened in Northern Italy in the spring of 2020, and then the numbers that follow it denote the next evolutionary step in it. Piper said on his naming convention that there are already naming schemes for all these lineages, but they're mostly of relevance to phylogenetic geeks like me. Phylogenetics being the study of evolutionary development and diversification, if that big word confused you like it did me. This naming convention isn't new to the world of viruses, however. Different variants and strains of influenza have names like this too, which are a jumble of numbers and letters, being called things like H1N1, H3N2, and H7N9. There are pros and cons to this naming convention, that's for sure. They are the most scientifically appropriate names to be used for the variants. They are also incredibly non-biased names. These names don't point to any location or group of people specifically, something a different set of names can't quite say about themselves. However, Oh my gosh, these names are incredibly dull. These names definitely don't have too much pizzazz to them. And while that might just sound like me being pedantic, the lack of identity in these names is something of an issue. As mentioned, we need clear, concise language for these variants to communicate about them easily. And these names are not clear or concise. They're pretty confusing and a tad hard to remember which one is which. Strings of letters and numbers are quite hard to remember, and perhaps it's unfair to expect the average person to not only remember the names B.1.1.7, B.1.351, B.1.617 and P1 exactly, but also to remember which name applies to which variant. As mentioned, other viruses get variant names like this too, like the flu. However, flu variants aren't headline news, and all that often don't really need to be in the minds of the average person. COVID-19 variants, however, are widely talked about, so need names that are a little easier to grasp. And the second name and convention is an awful lot more easier to grasp. However, it comes with some serious drawbacks. This is also perhaps the most common name and convention we have for these variants. It's becoming incredibly common to name these variants after the parts of the world they were first found in. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the B.1.1.7 variant has become known as the UK variant as it was first reported on in the UK. This is also the case for the other three variants. B.1.351 is also known as the South African variant. B.1.617 is also known as the Indian variant. And P.1.1 is also known as the Brazil variant. These geographic names seem to have started life as being referred to as the variant first recorded in X place, and this slowly morphed into X places variant. These names, unlike the B.1 etc names, are incredibly easy to remember and communicate with one another. It's easy to see why the mass media has latched onto them, as they are clear and concise, two very important facts in the naming of deadly viruses. These names, however, come with a huge drawback. They have been deemed stigmatizing and putting blame on these parts of the world. This has been a reoccurring conversation not just with COVID-19, but with diseases across history. Many times the disease has been named after where it was first recorded. Take the Spanish flu or even the Zika virus, named after a forest in Uganda. It's not only geographic names that complain to names like this either. Groups of people can be affected too. When HIV was first described in 1981, it was called gay-related immunodeficiency, or GRID for short. A more crude name it was being called at the time was also gay cancer. Like with geographic names, these names for HIV point towards the homosexual community, despite the fact that HIV can affect anyone. These variant names can also make people feel shame or guilt and even incite anger towards the groups they relate to. There's been a rise of hate crimes against Asian Americans in the USA due to the pandemic and its origin in China. Calling it things like the Chinese flu do not help mitigate this problem. Same applies to the variant names too 
Uruguay. In 2015, the World Health Organization advised that we should refrain from geographic naming of diseases. Yet despite this, these easy to remember, though often stigmatizing names, have prevailed during the course of this pandemic. What I find interesting about these geographic names is just how local they can get. Here in the United Kingdom, the UK variant has not really been referred to as the UK variant, but instead it has been referred to as the Kent variant. This is still a geographic name though, referring to the county of Kent in the southeast of England, where this variant was first recorded. This seems like a huge example of playing the blame game. The world is blaming all of the UK for this variant, and the UK is blaming Kent specifically. Kent must feel like the kid who gets told off a talking, despite the fact the whole class were. If you happen to live in Kent, then I would love to know your thoughts on this matter. And did you guys in Kent use a more specific name than Kent itself? Perhaps referring to it as the variant of a specific town or street in the county. Also, if you're watching from a country with a noteworthy variant, e.g. South Africa, India or Brazil, then do you too have a more local name for your variants too, like we've done here in the UK? Kent tangent aside, I'm sure you can see there are pros and cons with both of these naming systems. Is there any way we can solve this issue? Well, hopefully at the time of recording, this issue has just been solved. Yesterday, for me anyway, on the 1st of June 2021, the World Health Organization announced that they are officially renaming these variants of COVID-19. Instead of stuffy scientific names or stigmatizing geographic names, they will be using the letters of the Greek alphabet. The Greek alphabet is constantly being used in different fields, so it's not too shocking to see it here. This means that the four variants we have been looking into today have all been given brand new names. B.1.1 slash the UK variant is now called Alpha, B.1.351 slash the South African variant is now called Beta, B.1.617 slash the Indian variant is now called Delta, and P.1 slash the Brazil variant is now called Gamma. These are clear, don't point the blame to any specific geographic locations, and easy words to remember. It might beg a bit of time to remember what name applies to what variant, but I'm sure we will get there. Other ideas were suggested it seems, notably Greek gods or even pseudo-classical invented names, whatever that's supposed to mean. One source said that Greek gods were denied due to their bloodthirsty nature, and yeah, if you dig into the surface of the Greek myths, you'll see that naming a deadly virus after these guys isn't in that good taste. However, the source saying that was the sun, so maybe don't believe it. Also, don't buy the sun. Overall, it seems like Greek letters was a pretty good decision. Though this is incredibly new news, so who knows how well they'll stick. You can name things whatever you want to name them, but names only really work if everyone agrees and uses them. I've already seen some articles emerge using these Greek letter names, however I wouldn't be too surprised if people and media institutes just stuck to the names we've been using thus far. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought a lot of issues with our world to light, and one of those issues is undoubtedly the problems, confusion, and stigmatization that can arise when we name viruses and their variants. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.